Hello. Hello, hello. Getting everything set. I just gotta get a drink. The water. spot on my desk so let's lay down the painting rags hopefully that will cut out some of that glare there we go that gets rid of that glare a little bit Yay! Yay! That's better. Okay. Now I make sure I'm not blinding myself. Oh, that'll be good. Now you'll just be blinded by my bright white hands. Okay. Alright. Cool. Let us begin. Get my knife. All right. So I think, so what we're doing today, what we're doing, is we're building the model kits for this game here. Warhammer Underworld's Night Vault. So the starter box comes with these cool, these cool ghosts uh, called the Thorns of the Briar Queen. That's pretty nerdy and awesome. And this is the Briar Queen and she's got this cool like rose vine thing going on. And then it comes with the, the other faction in here is these three, they're like wizard knights. They're very cool. Uh, so that's that set. And then, because I can't just settle for and just the base set, and I've been eyeballing these, this set since before I was going to get into this game, uh, from the first uh, launch of the game, the sepulchral guard, then these badass skeletons. I've been eyeballing these skeletons for about a year anyway. So I was like, well, if I'm gonna get into the game, I may as well get the skeletons now. But you always need some cool skeletons for whatever fantasy game you're playing. And uh, with these guys, I can definitely, I like these guys, I like this game because it's all like, it's like Warhammer. It's like Warhammer Fantasy or uh, Age of Sigmar or whatever it is now. Um, but it's like small, it's small units. So I could buy a cool box of just a couple models, not break the bank, and it's part of a, another game. So I want to start with, so that's kind of a win-win for me, because I, I really like some of these models, and I can think of cool ways to use them in a D&D game, but I can't necessarily justify, you know, spending $60 on 10 models if I only really need two or three from that set. But now these are like, perfectly encapsulated small sizes of cool models I can figure out how to use. So, these ones are uh, 
with these ones they're easy to they're called easy to build snap fit models you don't have to glue them i probably will on certain areas the instruction sheet we're going to work off of i'm going to start with the knights uh, and we'll go from there so welcome to anybody in the stream and uh let's give a quick hail mardock before we get started hail mardock um and uh, if you have any questions about modern model building or painting or this game or about our lord and savior mardock the one-horned demon steed feel free to chime in in the chat we're just hanging out building models today let us begin number one uh so all these sprues i don't know how well you can see that oh, you can see it kind of well uh these sprues are painted i mean not painted they're uh printed right and uh each little bit has a number corresponding to it which will help us with these ikea like instructions so this first guy is like the commander of the unit and uh, we're gonna need parts five and three to start so we're going to look here and then we're just gonna carefully clip part number five off of the sprue here and then we're gonna find part number three uh, might be on the second half yep right there it's part number three Just want to get the there's a flat end to the clippers and a, a, a sharp end you want to get the flat end as close up against the edge of the model as possible before you clip so you get as as clean a clip as possible and what i'm gonna do real quick before we start piecing things together is i'm just gonna come in here and just gently shave that little flash down just with my exacto blade just get it so it's a little smoother that'll look nicer later when we paint them you want to get those kinds of flashings out of there before you start painting i don't always do it on my models you should probably do it on your models this is a new blade by the way i just replaced them today for this very stream so there we go Okay, there's that. Come over here to this one. Do the same thing. Kind of just trim down the flash. Over here. This is just like a little bit. I don't want to mess up the detail on that belt buckle or that little whatever that piece is there I also don't want these I want these cloaky bits to look smooth and of course this this shoulder blade the shoulder pad I mean shoulder blade shoulder pad I'm just kind of trimming it off I may have trimmed a little Maybe trimmed a little too close right there, but that's okay. I'm just kind of smooth that out, right? Reround it out with my blade. All right. So there are, whoop, there are pieces three and five, and those are gonna just slide together. I'm like, oh, did I get that off? And this apparently is just going to just gonna fit together like that apparently and then that looks like that so you got his tabard and then his under robe sticking out there so that's gonna fit together like that all right 
And then we need parts one, two, and four. So, parts one, two, and four. I believe this is one. This big old chunk is one. All right. Be careful though, because we've got a lot of fragile pieces on there, so. Aha! There's one. Come in and just. I may need to bring the camera down a little. There we go. I'm kind of sitting at a weird angle. There we go. That's easier. It's easier for me to see. And my arm's not going fucking crazy already. All right. There we go. There we go. Just gently, just gently scraping those flash lines off. You don't even have to like cut with the blade. You can just kind of drag it like that. All right, they've been doing a really great job with their new models where they pretty much hide all the mold, mold lines. So like once upon a time, you used to have like these mold lines all over their models from where the two halves of the mold would meet. And you'd have to like go through and like trim down every mold line. Uh, but now they're doing a really great job of hiding those mold lines in the details of the model. So you don't really get that as much. But this is how you would just take it and scrape those mold lines down. All right, pretty good. Now we need to find piece number four, which is his head, which is uh, right here. There's piece number four. He, he's the commander, so. Typically with their models, whoever's in charge is also the one not wearing the helmet. So, I don't know, that's weird, but that's the way it works. And then number two, which is right there, which is his other leg. Now here, we wanna be super careful because it looks like this is part of the mold that holds everything together. But really this peg is uh, to fit the leg into the base. So we wanna make sure we don't cut the peg, but instead we just butt right up against it. See there? And just trim the bottom. So we cut the, the mold flashing off of the peg. And then we just need to trim that a little on the edge. Great, but we don't wanna don't want to go up here and cut because then we we lose the support mechanism we don't want that all right and we just shave that down great now Let's see. 
this little nugget here. All right, so we got this little center hole and this is like the neck slot, it's the collar, right? So we're gonna gingerly put that in place there. Great, marvelous, just like that. On then, um, we're gonna put this almost triangle peg into this slot there like so. And then these three pegs will line up with those three holes like so. Oh, he did like a weird dance there just for a second. All right. Ooh, look at that. See, so now this is the point where I may crack this back open and glue it because there is a definite seam right there on the shoulder pad and I want that to not be there. I want to keep that joined. So, um, but for the most part, yeah, that looks pretty good. So let me crack that back open if I can. Ever so gingerly. Ever so gently and gingerly. It's hard because there's a lot of little, a lot of little details kind of sticking out here and there. They said these are easy to build. They didn't say they're easy to take back apart, you know? So we just want to be just slowly kind of shimmy it back out. I don't even know if I need to take it off all the way as much as I just need to get it open enough to pop a little bit of glue in there. So I think that's good. All right. This is uh, Citadel Plastic Glue and this company that makes this games, uh, Games Workshop Citadel. Uh, they make this plastic glue. You can get uh, like Testers makes a plastic glue as well. And it's pretty much just the same thing. But you put a little bit in there. Well, I'm gonna put a little bit on that corner of that too. I'm gonna squeeze this guy back together. And what the plastic glue does is it kind of um, melts the plastic a little bit, right? So the plastic all uh, kind of forms together in those spots. And I'm gonna just hold that for a minute while that starts to fuse. Do, 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 do. God, you don't realize how sharp some of these little edges are too until you're like squeezing them tight together. And then once that glue is dry, I'll, before I prime, I'll come back through and just kind of, if I need to shave down the, where the glue is on the seam there, I will just to smooth it back down, especially on this little, you get a little clumpy, but that's okay. I mean, not clumpy, but like a little goopy, a little goopy. That's fine. All right, cool. Now we'll need parts six and seven, which are, this is six and this is seven. Marvelous. I especially like these guys because one of my biggest complaints with the modeling hobby, just overall in general, is um, I see a lot of people who don't who don't add any sort of like scenic base to their models, and I really feel like you can't consider the the model completed unless you add a little bit of scenery to the base. Well, these because uh, I just think it, it completes the look and, and gives the whole model like a, a bit little bit more character you know um, these ones have sculpted bases so uh, I don't have to worry about using basing material unless I want to add a little bit of flourish here and there um, and they're you know people who m may not normally Ooh, gotta love that scraping plastic noise um, people who maybe didn't used to base their models now get to see just how nice a model with a base is looks I just think if you're gonna spend it if you're gonna spend any amount of time painting the model you owe it to yourself to base the model as well and since this takes care of that for you 
Now it's just like, you just keep painting. It's on the base, you just paint it. And you don't have to do anything too fancy. Hit it with gray and then, you know, throw a black wash over a gray base coat. And that's pretty much it, you know, if you're doing old stone and it's not hard. No, it just, it's like one little extra step, but that's okay. So these models have that taken care of now. You can just do it, do it. That's uh, what the emperor would recommend. All right. Mm, okay. I have little plastic pieces all over my home. Uh, I'm gonna also glue just for extra stability there. I'm gonna glue him to his feet. And then we just line up those pegs. Pop them in place. Now, when I'm painting that, I'll probably regret having glued his feet down. But, um, see, look how quick that already starts to, yeah, that already started setting. It's fine. I don't, I mean, I'm used to, I mostly build my models before I paint them, so. Um, that is the trend I will continue on. All right, little peg here. Boop. Boop. Just throw a little dot of glue on both sides. Uh, these, I'm, you know, I'm not trying to, I'm not going to be trying to win any painting competitions with these models, so. These are just for me to tootle around on and have fun. Well, there we go. Look, there's the first, there's the first model. There's the first wizard. He's pretty badass looking. Wow, that only took uh, 15 minutes to build that one model, and we got so many to go. 17 models total. I'm, I'm May not build them all on stream, but we build these three wizards. That's for sure. So yeah, he's the he's the man in charge. Look at a cool flame. He's just holding a fireball. And he's got his, this cool ass staff, and I love this sword on his back here. Fucking rad. All right, cool. First one done. Let's. Uh, where can you? Where can you guys see the spoils of our labor? Right there. Leave them right there. I'll leave them right there for now. On to number two. All right, number two calls for pieces eight, nine, 10, and 11. All right, so here's eight. Oh, here's 10. And 11. Again, I'm gonna be real careful where it butts up against. All right, second, second one. Nine. All right. Is the uh, plumage for their helmet. What did I say? Eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay, uh, body is eight. Body is eight. Again, being real careful that peg where the foot goes. Real careful up against this sword. Just kind of very gingerly get in there, right? And there and there. Toss that aside. Carefully whittle that down a little. Whittle it a little. Uh, 
be extra careful on that right side shoulder pad because that's where their little heraldry mold is as well. So we don't want to cut into that cool like hammer detail that they have there. On this other side, it's a blank shoulder pad and I don't mind if it looks a little, like I'm kind of cutting into it a little bit too much rather than filing, but I also don't mind like a bumpy beat up shoulder pad. So I think it gives it a little bit more character there. All right, I'm just, just kind of get the knife in there and then just rotate it. And that's all the pressure you need to kind of scrape that underside off there. And then just a scrape on that cape edge. And that's all we need there. Okay, that's good. Um, that This is gonna be a hidden detail. I'm fairly certain that lays behind the faceplate, but anything that connects to an inner joint, you wanna make sure it's smooth so that the pieces fit together right, right? So that's what we did there. And then, all right. Hair and plumage is a little trickier, so. No, it's just about patience. And you don't have to do this. This is just an extra step you can take to ensure your models look extra nice once they're, once they're painted. It just gives it that nice professional finish, just knowing that you put that little extra prep work in at the beginning to make sure that, you know, there weren't any unsightly lens. I have a lot of minis like that have been sitting kind of primed in my in my uh, minis case from long before I was doing like taking it seriously enough to clean mold lines and stuff so I had a lot of older minis sitting around primed ready to be painted that I'll probably have to either give in and uh, reprime them after I give it a quick scraping or or just have to be happy with, you know, mold lines on certain models, which is fine. It's learning to clean every one of them. All right, we got those there. All right, nine and 10, those do fit together flush. So uh, this, because it is a, because it's the head especially, I'm gonna just dab a little bit of glue, boop. There we go. Woo! That's the cool, crazy helmet. Look at that, Look at that plumage. It's flowing in the wind. All right. Now we'll need piece number 12, which is neither of those. Mm, that's number 12 right there. Up against another peg there. Flush up against the cloak. On her sleeve. And on her other sleeve there. Those will be easy flash lines to clean. Done. Anybody, uh, anybody hanging out? We're um, building some models for the uh, Warhammer Underworlds uh, game. Just got into that. A buddy at work got me into it. Picked up a box set this week. Played at a local shop yesterday. Um, he, a uh, buddy, buddy of uh, mine at work knows I'm a model painter and so uh, he shows off my work every once in a while to people on his shift and then I had to fill in on the night shift and uh, one of the other guys I worked with was like oh man you should check this game out I'll show you how to play it if you're interested and uh, kind of sat on it for a couple months and I'm like you know what I am interested so show me how to play 
And then here we are. And now, now I've spent way too much money on on toy soldiers again. It's kind of my thing. I love it. I love it. And uh, yeah. Okay, great. So that cradle's in there. But again, I just want. I just feel a little better, and these models are a little stronger. If you just, you don't have to glue them. These ones are partic are made particularly so that you don't have to glue them, but I like that little extra security, you know? I like, I like a little extra security knowing that these guys ain't going nowhere. Okay, now, remembering the issue I had with the last shoulder, I'm gonna just, oop, a little bit of glue turn into kind of a heavier flow on that, on that glue pour. Be careful that you don't over glue. Um, I, this, that was on the inside of the model though, so I think we're gonna be okay. There we go. All right. Oh, she's awesome. Cool. Uh, just gotta find her base now. She's got her sword drawn. She's ready to go. All right. Base number 13 is hers. 13. Huh? Sorry. Sorry if you don't like that uh, plastic scraping noise. That is an almost unavoidable noise, though. All right. Hit the spot where the feet are going to go. And... There we go. There is Wizard Knight number two. Oh, she's rad. These are so, so I mean, Warhammer models, uh, when I first started playing many, many years ago, back in Warhammer Fantasy and 40K, like, fifth edition, you could do a lot more customizations with the models because they were all kind of like, here's an arm, here's an arm, here's the torso. And you can kind of, you know, cut and re-sculpt and, and mold things as you wanted. They're very static. Uh, these, they've taken a, away a lot of the customization, but the poses are so much more dynamic that you can still customize when you paint, right? You can still give it your own flourish as far as like your paint style goes. But, I don't know, these are, I don't, I don't, hardly even notice the trade I mean I notice the trade-off uh, but and I think it's for the better because these models are super cool in pose the detail is really high very very cool all right that's it for that got one more of those nights coming up Alright, one more of this group, and then we'll be done. Wait, did I do a sword on there? Okay, his sword's there. Great, okay. 15 and 16 to complete the head. It's also, they have these numbered really well. Um, so, uh, also back in the olden day, when I first started, you could clip out all the little bits and pieces that you wanted because you were gonna customize shit anyway. The first time I bought a, a set of their newer models in the most recent era, I, uh, 
wasn't paying attention and I trimmed, I cut a bunch of items from the sprue, not realizing that they were numbered because they were kind of particular about how they went on. Oh, that was a joy. So I learned that lesson the hard way. These new ones are numbered. Pay attention to the numbers. They're there to help you, Spaz. Jesus. All right. Whew. You guys, when in doubt, read the instructions, okay? That's why That's why they're there. They're not calling you out. They're not saying that you're, you're worth less because you look at instructions. Read the instructions. It's okay. They're there to help you. All right. There is... Well, there is the hand for night number three. Which parts now? That's that. We just did this. That's the skull. Now we need 18, 17, and 14. 18, 17, 14. 14. This is big, this big chunk here. Sir Chungus. Sir Chungus the Big. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. All right, there's part one. Part one. That was 14. We need 18 and 17, which I believe are his arms. Yep, 18 and 17 are his arms. There we go, getting real, oh, it's getting real fiddly in those small areas though. That's all right, we got out. In and out, no problem, there we go. And, God, these guys, I just like, they're so, they're so dynamically posed, you can even just kind of tell looking at the, the models on the plastic sprue as you're clipping them, that just the way his, the way his hand is cocked as he's holding the sword, you can tell he's like holding it. Like, I think he's holding it up, right? Is he holding it up or out? I don't know, it's, it's not just a, I'm carrying a sword. It's a holding the sword with purpose kind of look. And that's a cool, let me get a cool pose here. All right. <laughs> All right, just a little bit of glue in those. Beep, beep, beep. He's looking off to the side also. God, they're all like looking over their shoulder like, what up? What up, brah? What up? Oh yeah, see? That arm coming out. Okay, I see. that arm post oh, okay I see I see it there we go there's a little bit of uh, puzzle piecing that goes on there ah shit I didn't trim some of the pieces I got carried away I got carried away I forgot to fucking to trim the mold line there or the flash. Dummy dum dum. Alright. It's alright, we got it. Mm. Yep, yeah, thought that was gonna happen. Great. Good. That's fine. It's fine. It's good we saw this now. While we're still while we're still piecing it together. There we go. Alright. No harm, no foul. That's done there. Now we need part 
19 and 20. That's the chess piece and then the extra tabard piece. Plus, we're coming down to the last little chunks on these sprues. In fact, I think 20 here, this tabard piece. Tabard, and it looks like a kneecap armor. And that is it for that sprue. That's done. All right. So, 19 is the rest of his shoulder pads. Slash tabard. Like inner tabard, right? And while we're here, because we know we're gonna need this very quickly after, let's go ahead and just cut that base right off there. And now that sprue is empty as well. All right. All right. Get rid of this flashing. Okay. better oh my goodness my dog's coming out to say hello hi dog hi pupper hi sweet baby hi sweet baby dog hi, sweet. what's up oh sure what time very near immediate future okay great I'm gonna glue this guy together I'll stop the stream no, it's cool. Well, I knew. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're like, oh, they're like right around the corner. Um, mm, that I don't know. All right. Well, you guys, we've got some friends in from out of town. They've never been in Austin before, and so we're going to go see them. I might come back on later as we piece together more models, but we've... Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. There we go. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Did we get it? Did I fuck it up? There we go. All right. All right. Uh, last little bit of glue in the base there. And now we... Fasten that down. And that is that. Oh my goodness. There we go. So there's the first three. There's the first three models here. Very cool. Well, this is good stuff. That only took about 45 minutes to build those first three. Very chunky. Those are very, those are very big guys. Very big models. There's only three of them on that army. So let's show off what we're looking at for this next set here. All right, we got, again, two sprues, but this is gonna be seven models. And these are ghosts, and so they've got all sorts of very fragile, fiddly bits, and they kind of hover above their bases. So they're very fragile, and they've got a lot of very thin uh, sections to those. So that'll be a nightmare to cut out. That's cool. Um, but they'll look very cool when they're built. And then these guys, again, skeletons. There's seven models on this sprue as well. And again, a lot of thin, fiddly bits that will be a total fucking nightmare to cut off this sprue but they will look pretty rad once they're all built, I think. Um, and I can't wait to paint all these guys. So that is the first part of the build stream. Uh, we're gonna call it good here. And uh, I'll probably be back on a little later today. Uh, anyone still watching, thank you for stopping by. And uh, yeah, we'll be back in a bit. Hail Marduk. <laughs>